Welcome to Generation Impact Bible College tonight. Uh, we are on topic 350 and uh, looking forward to taking a semester's break. Uh, can you believe it? Six months down in 2023 already and we're halfway through the year. Can you believe it? Awesome how God has kept us and how He's kept us going and uh, awesome time to have to just be able to get together. So while people are busy signing on, getting together, let's just commit this time to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you for this evening. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to once again be able to come in and study your word. Lord, what a privilege, what an honor. Uh, Father God, as we do that, we thank you that faith is generated by hearing the word, Father God. And we trust you to ignite faith in the hearts of your people. And Father God, I thank you that no single person under the sound of my voice will leave this broadcast the same way as they've come in. But Father, they'll be changed in by the power of your word. And I thank you that the word will take up a root and settle in their hearts. Bear forth much fruit, Father, from which many can feast, many can grow, many can become strong in Jesus' mighty and precious name. So we bless you. We thank you. We give you all the glory in advance for everything that will be accomplished this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. For those that don't know me, I'm Pastor Leslie Hissel. And uh, we are on topic number 350 tonight. And uh, the title for this particular topic is Christ's, or Christian leadership rather, in the workplace. Christian leadership in the workplace. As many of you will know, we've done quite a few topics on leadership over the last six months. And uh, it's because we're raising up a generation of leaders to be able to impact the nation. And not only this nation of South Africa, but also the nations of the world. And therefore, we need to raise up strong, powerful people that are capable of doing and standing in God's on God's word and be able to be the person that God wants them to be. So tonight, Christian leadership in the workplace. What a challenge. Uh, I think that every single person individually that we know, obviously, you have to work. You've got to generate an income. You've got to keep yourself busy. And uh, so, therefore, every, everyone, every one of us find ourselves working somewhere, whether it be employment to generate an income, whether it be uh, working for the Lord in ministry, whether it be, uh, doesn't matter what it is, organizations, schools, businesses, even housewives at home, you're working. Everybody is, is supposed to keep their time busy and keep themselves productive. So as a result, we need to lead in that particular environment, in that context. Now, the question is, and we've already proven that God wants you and I to lead. We have, the God, world is, is starving of good leadership. And therefore, it's more important even today than it is ever before, even for politicians in ministerial positions and even in governmental places that need to, to, to live forth the life of their conviction and their religion and be able to live out those, those things. Now, in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16, it says this, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And I think that is the theme song that I believe a Christian leader needs to implement in his life. Because <clears throat> when you are out there in the secular world, when you're out there mixing between all people, which is where we spend most of our time, it's in that environment, it's in that context that you need to really let your light shine. And people need to be drawn in by the the fruit of your life and what is happening in your life. And John 15 and verse, sorry, John 15 verse 8, it also speaks about the fact that my father is glorified by me bearing forth much fruit. So therefore, our lives need to exemplify and show forth our faith and our confidence in God and our faith in Him. And when we do that, people are automatically drawn because they're going to look and see what you have and they're going to say, I want that. So therefore, our lives need to be relevant wherever we operate, wherever we are. So therefore, remember, leadership is influence, influencing person from point A to point B or from one place to another. And we are trusting God that our um, lives will be influencing people to come closer to Christ, to be more like Jesus. That is that is ultimately what we're trying to do and what we're going to. And you really want to put it into uh, biblical context. Um, basically, the Bible says, go out and preach the gospel. All right. And secondly, it tells us the fact that we need to make disciples. So therefore, it doesn't matter where we find ourselves. That's what it is supposed to be. And if we can be in a, in a, in a work environment, whether it be in a business where you're going to work day to day as an accountant or whether it's a school where you're going as a teacher, whether it's an engineer out in some kind of manufacturing environment <coughs> or whether it's serving people in the community as, as a political figure doesn't really matter at, at every single one of them irrespective of what they are, irrespective of the place, you and I need to have our light shine and we need to have influence in that environment to bring the light and power of God into that environment. And that is when we're going to see a nation change. Because the thing is that you can, you can try and go for the top 
and you're going to try and attack the, the people that are in top executive positions. But let me tell you something. Unless the heart of the individual has changed down below, that top person is really going to have limited influence, limited uh, ability to be able to influence the hearts and lives of people. And therefore, it's important that we start from the bottom up and work through the people and actually see the hearts of the people change. Because when you start changing the hearts of people, that's when you start seeing the change happening in real life. So therefore, I... When I speak to people, I encourage them. I say, your business needs to be a testimony of God and who He is as much as you are as an individual. All right. And that's a tall order because that means that you've got to influence the people in your organization to show forth the character and the personality and, the, and everything regarding God. So therefore, they need to become servants of the Most High God and they need to follow Him and His example. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31, it says, Therefore, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, okay, and that's really well on the focus, whatever you do, you do all to the glory of God. All right, and that is really what your and my life is about. So if you're listening to this thing tonight, to this broadcast, and you're listening to this particular topic, and you have not accepted Christ in your life, then I would encourage you to do that, okay? Because this scripture talks about the fact that every single person, doesn't matter who we are, if we serve the Almighty God and we believe in Him, then everything we do needs to be to His glory, all right? So whether you in a business, doesn't matter. Whether you are just working as an employee, doesn't matter. Your life needs to be a witness of God and who God is. Now, when you and I as, as believers enter into the secular world where we generate an income, it is rare to go into a business that is 100% uh, believers, Christians. Okay, You're going to find that somewhere in that business there's going to be an unbeliever, maybe an atheist, um, maybe another religion or religious grouping. doesn't really matter another worldview, however you want to describe it. That you're going to find wherever you go and whatever you do. All right, so now... <clears throat> Therefore, when we go in there and we are put into positions of authority, say you're in a managerial position, whatever, that is, that is going to immediately cause a, a challenge for you and I as a believer. Because we're going to have to make sure that the morals that we stand for, the values that we stand for, the qualities that we stand for, and that which we believe, our convictions, are lived out in our day-to-day -day lifestyle. So therefore, we have to apply the Word of God in our circumstance, in our situation. Now, normally in a secular environment, you're not going to just find it plain sailing, okay? Because the thing is that there are going to be people, especially if the other uh, worldviews and other religious groups that are going to most probably attack you and come and criticize you and come up against you. So you have to stand strong in that context and in that environment. So those are the challenges you and I are going to face, not to compromise our stand, not to compromise our conviction, not to compromise that which we believe. All right. So the thing is that we need to stand firm in that and allow God to work with us. And he will give us favor because he will make all things work together for good for them who are in Christ Jesus. So even when you have that obstacle, when you face that challenge that comes against you, Trust God, believe God, because it's in you now really in uh, the devil's territory. You're now really in up in his face, okay? And that is where the real, uh, real battle is. And that's where we've got to stand firm and trust God and believe God and allow God to work in us and through us to make a change in the very atmosphere. That is when you stand and you believe that because you come in, you not because you're necessarily any special person, but because you are in, or usher in rather, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, he who indwells you as he comes in with you into that context and into the environment, the very atmosphere will change because of who you are. So therefore, your space round about you has to show Christ and has to allow Christ to come in. Therefore, there is a change that comes. So, so that is where it's. And I also believe with all my heart that God, when he places us in those environments, that there's an expectation that we lead. All right. And that word lead is influence, all right? So in other words, you and I influence the very atmosphere, the very environment. We can do that through prayer. We can do that through um, praying for the organization, the people in it. Um, and therefore, we can stand firm and we can become an influencer in that particular environment that we find ourselves in. And that's what we got to do. That is the challenge that you and I as a believer face. We see in Titus 2 verse 7, it says, And show your own self in all respects to be a pattern and a model of good deeds and works, and teaching what is unadulterated, showing gravity, having the strictest regard for truth and purity of motive, with dignity and seriousness. 
I can't emphasize how important those words are. But the thing is, we have to have the truth and we have to have purity. Okay, so in everything we do, when we go in there, we cannot compromise. Your yay is your yay and your nay is your nay. You cannot say one thing and do a different thing. All right, your, your life has to be pure. Your narrative and the agenda that you live by should be and must be a pure and based on truth. So we basically do that and we stand on that to allow God to work through us. In Galatians 3 verse 23 through 24 it says this, And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. Now, the reason I mention that is because we have responsibilities and we have towards the business. So when you're employed, you're employed to do a specific job. Uh, you have to make sure that certain goals are achieved. You must make sure that the people that have been put under your care, that you shepherd them and that you care for them and that you, you serve them and do whatever you need to do to achieve the goals. Because that's ultimately what they're paying you for. That's what the salary is. is that, or that's what they're expecting you to exchange for the salary that they're paying you. So there has to be um, integrity in your conduct. And those are the, the challenges that you and I as a believer face because sometimes in the work environment you might be tested and tried to compromise values, to compromise um, your integrity and con compromise your conviction. And you might be tempted to tell a white lie or to just bend the truth a little bit and to and to do things like that. Now, I'm not saying don't be wise. What I am saying is that you've got to be careful that you maintain your integrity and you stay pure and you stay true. Okay, that is really what is critical and what is important. So, in the environment then, then you are going to continuously face the challenge of how do I serve the people within this organization? Because remember, ultimately God cares about the people that are working and that is why you are there. You are there to help and to, and to bring the light of God and to bring the, 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 the salt and to bring the flavor of God into that environment and to allow it to work in that environment for you. So, therefore... There are challenges that you and I face as, as Christians, as believers, when we go into, into the business world or into the workplace or into the secular environment or the marketplace, as some people like to call it. But now understand that from the business perspective now, so there's challenges you face. There's things that you have to do, and then there's, at the end of the day, the business expectations, okay, the organization, because they have obviously, obviously employed you. So these goals that the organization, organization has that they have to achieve, like, say, for argument's sake, that it's a school, then you've got to graduate students at the end of the day, and hopefully those students will graduate with good marks and be able to enter into the world as a well-adjusted individual to be able to do what they need to do, and your contribution will be towards achieving that if it's a business that's say making furniture then at the end of the day your goal is that ultimately you've got to deliver a product and of good quality and of good standards um, which is furniture all right and that furniture needs to go out and be marketed and sold and whatever and your contribution towards that will be whatever it may be so therefore you have to make sure that the goals are accomplished others so that that is what the business is going to expect from you they're paying you a salary to do a job and they expect you to do that job well okay so that is what they're expecting from you and then you need to fulfill the responsibilities of that particular position because obviously depending on the rank and where that position is you might be employed in management position or directorship position or some kind of chief officer or whatever the case may be wherever you employed you have responsibilities and you've got to fulfill those responsibilities that that particular position requires from you and you're gonna to have to fulfill that so those are expectations that the business or the organization will have of you and you have to deliver that and you cannot ignore that or neglect that because if you do you're not giving God glory when people look at you they can't say that you are producing and, produ and productive and doing the best of your ability and therefore achieving glory towards God none of that will happen all right so what then as the next subheading would God expect from you and I in that work environment what is God's given mandate to you and I as believers when we go in to lead as Christian leaders in the workplace? What does he expect? The first thing is that obviously we have to lead. All right. So God expects you not to go in there and to lead his people. We see in Proverbs 11 verse 14, it says this, where there is no counsel, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So therefore, 
people need to be led. They need to be counseled. They need to be directed. They need to be shown. So therefore, when you fulfill certain functions, hopefully you've got supervisory um, skills. You've got leadership skills. If you're in a leadership position or if you're not, even if you're in a junior position, it doesn't really matter. You're still going to influence. And you have to still influence people towards Jesus. And you still have to show forth the goodness of God. And you still have to show God's uh, light in your life. And you've got to still show that God is for you, not against you, etc., etc. So all that has to be there. And so therefore, <clears throat> you have to love people. You have to care for people. And you've got to lead people. That's the first comment or first point. Second point, you have to serve the people. All right. And that we see in, in Luke chapter 22 and verse 27. It says, for who is greater, he who sits at the table or he who serves? It is not he who sits at the table. Yet I am among you as the one who serves. So in other words, God himself, Jesus himself is speaking. And <clears throat> he basically was the ultimate servant because he made himself less, came out of heaven, came down to earth to serve you and I. And you and I have to have the same attitude and heart towards the people that we are working with. We are not there to lord it over them. We're not there to be authoritarian towards them. We do not we do want to be a dictator or anything like that. We want to come in there and we want to serve them. <clears throat> Excuse me. And show forth the goodness of God, the heart of God, the love of God, so that we can bring change into those individuals and draw them closer to Jesus and ultimately get everybody born again within that organization. I can actually give you an example that uh, we did that year um, in our hometown where we basically ended up with a situation where we were working in about 42 businesses around the city and uh, we were going in on a, on a daily basis into their different places, some in the morning, evening, afternoon, and we called it building a city and we went in to specifically serve the businesses and to bring the, the hope of Jesus into the business and therefore whatever their needs were, whatever the situation was, that, that is what we ministered into. So I can never, I'll never forget, we actually used to have the, the managers of the organizations actually say to us, listen, please get your people in here more regularly because they were finding that the staff didn't have and improved. They found that there was all kinds of, um, the pilferage had shrunk, customer satisfaction was higher, and all the, 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 the indicators they could work on, they could see that having the input of Christ into the business was actually causing that to improve and to be of be great and so therefore even the, the 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 staff satisfaction was higher and just generally the business was doing well and in a couple of the businesses that we went into we actually got to a point where every single individual the one particular organization had 32 employees on staff in that particular branch and all 32 had come to know christ and they were serving christ and they were um, living out their lives there and that business was starting to thrive because of God's favor upon them and that was actually excelling beyond the wildest expectations so so we know that Christian leadership in business is vital it's important it, it cannot be overestimated overemphasized rather and uh, and therefore we need to understand that when we go in we're serving people. We're serving, doesn't matter what position they're in. We have an agenda. We have an attitude. We have, or, or uh, not an attitude, but we have a, a goal to achieve. And that is to see the business and the people in the business come to know Christ. All right. And therefore the business will automatically prosper as a result of that. So then we need, we can see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, love this verse. It says, imitate me. Just as I also imitate Christ. That's Paul speaking to the Corinthian church. And he's saying to them, listen, imitate me even as I imitate Christ. And when we are leading people, and when we are leading people, it doesn't matter where, the whole concept and idea is to actually transform the person from where they are to be more like Jesus every single day. So Jesus' ministry, although people say he, he was a servant leader, yes, he was. But that wasn't his goal. His goal was to actually transform the people and to bring them into a relationship with him and to ultimately get the people to serve God and to become more like God, just like Paul is saying here. Follow me, imitate me, even as I imitate Christ. So your and my mandate that in the business um, environment or in the marketplace or wherever you find yourself working 
Even if it's in a Christian organization or church or even a ministry, doesn't matter. Wherever you find yourself working, wherever you're laboring, wherever you're using your hands to, to improve and to add value and to, and to grow and to develop and generate possibly some kind of financial support for yourself. Wherever you find that, that it's, your goal is to be transformational in your, in your leadership and, and in your influence. So therefore, I want to see people become more like Jesus. I want them to get close to Jesus. They must become more like Jesus. And that is the radical part of the whole exercise that we want to be able to achieve within the lives of the individual. And that is really what we're pushing for. And that's what we're pushing towards. So that is what you, you need to understand. So be transformational. Then show forth Christ in that particular business. Remember now, this is speaking about the heart of God. What does God expect from you and I in the workplace? Okay, we have to show forth Christ because how, how if you, you in, in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, we just saw, imitate me even as I imitate Christ. So you have to show forth Christ. You have to show forth Jesus. Je they have to see Jesus in you. So therefore, you have to show, sorry about that, guys. It's, this is called um, <laughs> load shedding, <laughs> right? So, but praise God, we still got enough light to carry on. That is load shedding. Welcome to South Africa. But anyway, so we see, <clears throat> show forth Christ. So I... I quickly took a couple of scriptures here. The first thing is we've got to show Christ to the co-workers, all right? Whether they management, whether they the junior staff, whether they your peers, doesn't matter. You've got to show forth Jesus, all right? So Ezekiel 34 and verse 16, it says this, I will seek what was lost and bring back what was driven away. Bind up the broken heart and strengthen, that was, strengthen what was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong and feed them in judgment. Now, in this particular verse, it talks about the fact that we need to have compassion. We have to have encouragement. We have to uplift the people. We have to be patient. All right. So with co-workers, you have to be understanding. So therefore, you've got to ultimately build and restore their confidence and their certainty and, and make them strong in believing or in themselves, number one, and believing in what they're trying to do and what they're trying to accomplish. So therefore, we work with them. Compassion, encouragement, patience in the individuals or the co-workers. Secondly, we need to, in Psalm, uh, Proverbs 3 verse 12, it says this, for whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son, whom he delights. There is correction that comes when you are in that particular environment because you love. But it's the way you and I do it with our co-workers and the people that we are laboring with. You cannot come in there and bring a, a style or a way of breaking them down and making them feel worthless and that just take away all the motivation and everything like that. No, you have to, at the end of the day, the Bible encourages us to exhort comfort and edify people so that by the time you've finished with them, although you've shown them the error of their ways and you've maybe brought a criticism towards the, the work, at the end of the day, you need to uplift them and encourage them and to restore them and to bring, to, to bring them to a place where the feedback you give them is actually feedback that will uplift and not break down. All right. So it's incredibly, incredibly important then that you and I show that particular um, characteristic of Christ, that we bring that out of the people and actually unlock their full potential and everything that they are, rather than trying to destroy them and, and wipe them out. So there's no use to scream and shout and go crazy towards them. Yes, show them the error of the way. Yes, correct them. But that ultimately you've got to leave them encouraged, uplifted, and feel that they are still worth worthy and worth something all right then we look at um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 14 through 15 and it says now we exhort you brethren warn those who are unruly comfort the faint-hearted uphold weak be patient with all see that no one renders evil for evil to anyone but always pursue what is good both for yourselves and for all now in that particular scripture, it talks about the fact of relationships and who we are now, specifically in our showing Christ to customers, okay, showing Christ to those people that we deal with that come from the outside, even suppliers. So anybody that's outside of the organization of people that we work with, so co-workers or people inside the organization, the showing it to outside, we need to make everybody work together. All right. So that at the end of the day, we can foster unity and we can pursue what is good for everybody, not just for the business or the individual. Because remember, people come and do 
interact with you and transact with you because there's ultimately a service or something they want from your product that they want from you. And ultimately, at the end of the day, um, there's no benefit in breaking stuff down. And we need to be a win-win situation on both sides. So therefore, the style and the way that we show Christ is to, as much as we want to benefit and grow, they must, the people we deal with must benefit and grow, suppliers and customers. All right. So, so therefore, we have that attitude as described in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. Then to our to other believers, those that are of the same family as you and I are. So, so we're talking to people in the business, people outside the business, but we're talking to our, to our family. We're talking to the people that are there with us. In John 10 verse 11 tells us, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. So that's Jesus talking. He says, I am the good shepherd and I give my life for the sheep. Now, the expectation of Christ is that you and I serve one another the same way. All right. So you are your brother's keeper. Right, you are the one that is supposed to look after the well-being and everything else that goes with a family member and in Christ. Okay, so therefore, you and I need to encourage, pray for, uplift, exhort, edify one another and make sure that we grow together in that workplace environment. Doesn't now mean you cannot treat them differently in the workplace environment as you would in a church environment or in the ministry context. You have to treat them the same there as you would train change them in. See, it's no different. Okay, you cannot treat people differently in their work environment and they say, but you're two different people. You know, in church you're this and then in the workplace you're that. No. You need to reflect and show the same. doesn't matter where you are. And that is basically coming and showing and being just and being equitable and showing and God in the circumstance and situation. So that you need to treat people that way. Then we see also in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 13, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do that. So... There is this walking in forgiveness one to another, especially those that are in the in the fellowship of the saints and they are part of the family of God. So we need to show forth and walk in total forgiveness one to another, maintaining our relationships one with another, not not breaking down and destroying that which which we've already been built up. All right, and we bear with one another. All right, so therefore we we show the love of God one to another and we work with one another. Then I want you to have a look, and this is just something that I want you to, to maintain, because we've looked at what the business expects, we looked at the challenges, some of the challenges that, that you and I will face in the, in the secular world and in the workplace. We've also looked at, at the attitude that we should have and the way we should conduct ourselves as leaders in that environment and how we walk in that. But then I want you to realize that we need to also exercise faith wherever we go because the Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God. So we need to exercise faith. So the first thing we have to do is we have to put our faith out there for the people, okay? Because the people that are employed in that business, we've got to trust God for their protection. We've got to trust God for their, for their provision. We've got to trust God for their for everything to do with them as individuals, as people that come into agreement and trust God. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18, it makes it extremely clear that we have to pray for one another and pray for each, each other in every situation. It says in verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Take note of those last couple of words, for all the saints, all right? Not just individuals, one or, one or two of them, for every one of them. So, so that's why I encourage always when people come into the work environment or into the office environment or wherever they're going to work, start the day with prayer. You know, because the thing is that you're setting the atmosphere. You say praying for the people, you're coming in, you're praying for their needs, they're such and who knows what's happened at home before they came out. And you've got to bring the peace of God into that situation. And you've got to put your faith out there so that they can be uplifted, encouraged, and know that there's somebody that cares for them and loves for them and or loves on them rather, and that will show himself and show forth Christ. So we so we come with that mindset and that attitude to see the, the people grow. So that's the first thing. So you put your faith out there for the people. By the way, let me just make this comment. Um, I don't believe God really cares much about a brick and mortar structure, right? Indiv you know, business and what everything goes on with it. 
but God cares about the people and he's going to bless the business because of the people. So when the people are in the right place and trust in God, blessing will automatically accumulate to them because they'll walk in the favor of God. And therefore, you don't really have to pray much for the success of the business. If you pray for the people being at peace, the people being um, at, at um fulfilled, uh, people are satisfied, people are not needy, they, they're not battling or struggling, you will find a very strong business and a very prosperous business. Okay, then in James chapter 1 and verse 5, it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberty without reproach and it will be given to him. Cannot emphasize every single day, you have to put your faith out there for wisdom in the organization. Man, if you're even the most junior person in that organization, but God has put you there and you are influencing people, you are leading them. All right. Whether you're in a senior position or not, it's irrelevant. You're leading them because you're influencing them. And because you are in that, that position, you need to pray for your leaders in the organizations, those that have got senior positions. To have the wisdom of God. So you've got to pray for the wisdom of God to come into that organization. Not only for your own benefit, for your own use, but also for those that are in, in positions. Even if you say, Lord, put people across their paths that will influence them and help them and counsel them. Remember, we re read early on that there's a wisdom in a multitude of counsel. Because we need that counsel to be able to direct us to make good and right and fair decisions. So we need to have the wisdom of God to come in and to help us to run that organization or lead the people in a wise and a godly manner. Then in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10, this is another thing that we have to put our faith out there for every single day in the business. It says in Matthew 6, 10, you, you'll recognize this verse. It says, New, your kingdom, sorry, it's the Lord's prayer. It says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So in the Lord's Prayer, it talks about His kingdom coming and His will being done. You and I have to pray on a daily basis that, Lord, Your kingdom come, Your will be done in this organization. Not my will, not the will of the directors or everybody else, but Your will, Father. You've this business has been established here for a reason. I'm here in this business for a reason. And this reason's got eternal value to it. It's not just a temporary thing. It's not just to provide jobs and income to individuals or provide a product for people out there with a need. It's not for that. But Lord, it's your eternal value. It's your eternal destiny that this business has got. And therefore, I pray right now, Lord, that this business does not fall short of that which is his internal destiny and call. And Father, I pray and believe that you will direct every single step. And you've got to put your faith out there and trust God that this business and people, this grouping of people that are here working in this enterprise, that they will ultimately come to know you and come to know the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and be able to press in and do what needs to be done through this business or through this channel. And then, sorry, Psalm 1 verse 3 then says, Ye shall, ye shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf all shall not wither, and then whatever he does will prosper. And you can pray and you can say, Lord, Every believer in this place, whatever they lay their hands on, we're believing you that that will prosper, that will go forward and be successful. And therefore, through the favor that you and I have as individuals in God, success will automatically come into the business because of the children of God praying and being there and living the life that God wants them to be live and living out the destiny and the purpose for that organization. So... I believe that not only is it about leading people in the business very well, it's also about making sure the business achieves that which God has purposed and planned for it through the people that are there and that the right people are there and that the people are, that are there are encouraged and, and finding God acting on their behalf and, their, and God's favor being poured out upon them and them being successful and the, and the business um, receiving from that in, ultimately because of who is there. Then uh, the last verse before we close, I want to go to Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5 through 6 and says this, let your conduct, now this is talking about you as a leader, me as a leader, let your conduct be without covetousness, be content with such things as you have, for he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, I will not fear what can man do to me? So we need to understand that our confidence and our faith is in God. That He has placed us there for a reason. 
that we are not there just to, fulfill, to earn a salary or to do a, you know, to have money to look after things. Those are important things, but that's not the, the ultimate reason. That we are there because God wants us there to be able to do and to lead and to make a difference and transform the lives of the individuals which automatically will cause the business to prosper and be in health. And therefore, we see ourselves as that. Therefore, we also do not covet what each other has because in that environment, one of the things that happens often is that, you know, I'm earning X, Y, Z. I look at somebody else that I feel is most probably doing less work than I am, and he's actually earning more than I do, and that causes all kinds of covetousness and all kinds of things to happen. We need to trust God that whatever conduct with them in that business is done, is done fairly, and is done equitably, and that the, that, that business is run according to uh, godly principles, because that's what we're putting our faith out there for, is to trust God that this business achieves that which is purpose and intended for it to for, for it to do and therefore it will do everything and it will benefit and it will flow according to the, the the desires and the plans of god so i hope you've learned something there i believe that as you meditate on this and go through this that you'll see that you know don't don't just see a business or a workplace as just being a place where you go every day of the week um, just to make a living no it is part of god's eternal plan and I believe that even businesses and workplaces have eternal value and eternal destiny. And you being there is not a mistake. You being there is there for a reason. And that you have to bring change. And therefore you are instrumental in the, in the moving forward of the plans of God in that environment and in that place. And there's lives to be touched. There's people to be transformed. People to become more like Jesus. And that is what needs to happen. And that's what's got to happen in the marketplace. So Christian leaders within the marketplace is vital, is critical to change the atmosphere, to change the, the whole culture and everything that goes with that particular business. And as you do that, you'll see the hand of God move and we'll see the peace of God being restored into businesses, into communities, and we'll see the heart of God established in Jesus' name. So praise God. I hope you trust and learn something. And until next time, may the Lord bless you.